All right, I'll let everybody get in. Um, I guess I should maybe tweet that I'm on, though this is when I said. So we should be here in a few minutes. I put some papers for us. And we're gonna do some collage. So those of you who are watching on YouTube, welcome. You might want to bump forward just a little bit. Hey guys. All right, I just tweeted Dot and Eileen and Jean. Hi Jackie, hi Kat, hi Joy. Let me let everybody kind of get in and then we'll get started. We're gonna paper piece today. And um, I have some backgrounds that I got from um, TMT Carol that I cut up to be six by nines. And then we have this background that we did when we were playing with the distressed oxides that I thought this would make a good bunny if we put a bunny on top of there. But I was looking for something and what was funny is I found the pattern. I was looking for a picture of Gibson that I had cut up to do some paper piecing. And I found them in a baggie with some random body parts. Like I must have been trying to keep these arms and legs safe as a reference, but I don't have the rest of the body. I just have like two legs, an arm, and a couple extra hands. in a body, in a bag with Gibson. I know they're from a girl, but I thought that was sort of, you know, these random body parts. But I don't have the head or the dress or any of the rest of the pattern. I probably kept it so I could look at it when I was working on the girl and then forgot. So I've already cut four pieces of paper and I've cut my head and the body. So, and I just use, this is like a silvery gray. This one is music paper in a black and white. Uh, this one's more pieced out, but this is just a jelly print. And some dictionary paper. And this one's map paper and some gray stencil paper yeah just random body parts so what i thought we could do was pick out the blanket and then we'll glue those and we'll pick out the paper for the bunny and see how far we get so i'm going to put gibson back in the bag I think I want to use this vintage paper on this bunny, but I'm not sure what color I want to use to pop. I may just use the vintage paper and let what and use watercolors. What do we think of that? Keep it kind of simple. And if we just add some of the music paper here and there, then we can add watercolors. Because this will all take, this is all paper. Unless we see something that we think goes with this. But I don't want it to be too, I want it something to pop. I mean, I did pull this blue. And thought about doing that napkin. On her. So that, and then there's actually even blue snowflakes. So that's why I pulled that blue. So let's just push this to the side 
<clears throat> and let's look for some blanket. I'm going to spread these out so you can see the cat and kind of the background papers. <clears throat> and then what we would be picking out is the blanket. Okay. I don't think this turquoise goes with any of them. So I'm going to ditch that. Okay, I don't like this. I don't like the turquoise at all. So I'm going to ditch all the papers that have turquoise. That might be a good blanket there. Or maybe this green, because this green would pick up that green up there. So blue or green. That might go there. I'm just going to sort of look at what I have. I kind of like this one here with this peachy color in there. And I'm kind of leaning towards this green and blue with this one. Unless we go with a purple. I'm going to ditch this one. This is kind of how I do it. is I just sort of audition them. Kind of like that one there. All right, I'm gonna get rid of all those. Now the turquoise might come back here, potentially on the bunny. Okay, so this is the one this is the only one I put for this one. So let's and I'm just using the photograph like a pattern. And the arms are going to overlap it anyways. All right, so there's that one. And we'll, we'll glue in a minute. Okay. On this one, I'm leaning towards the brighter pink. Hi, Kathy. I think I'm leaning towards this brighter pink. I 
And I'm, what I just looked for was patterns that had um, papers that had patterns already on them. And then what we'll do is add the folds. And the details either with uh, ink tints or, okay, so there's that one. Okay, let me move these two because they're ready to glue. All right, the purple, I think that's better than the, the blue green. And I think I like this one better. And this is just a photograph that I took of our cat that I cut apart to make a pattern. Okay. So the pink, the green, or the blue. I'm leaning towards the blue with the pink in the background. The green's not... I don't think the, what do, what do we think on this one? Kind of like this bluish purple with the pink on the background. Cause there's that bright blue in there. It may show up purple on your screen. This is one of Joan's stencils. Hi, Kimberly. All right, I'm gonna leave these blankets a little bit longer than the photograph. Now, when I cut the head, I cut the face more precise because it's going to lay down and overlap with some of these other pieces. Okay. So, we put the blanket. Back in with the pattern. Okay, now let's decide on the bunny. Now we could bring back, let me put some of these papers that I had out away in their drawers and they'll be out of the way. Now, I thought about just going pink on pink with the bunny, but I think it doesn't, it'll blend too much and not pop.
But turquoise is a possibility. Like we could throw some of that on there. I'm not I'm not feeling this blue. And then that will take watercolor and we'll do some of the vintage paper. I'm thinking just like a little piece in the middle right here. Does she need in here, Bob? just here that fits just kind of like in that little bib area she needs um She needs kind of a brown for the nose. I don't know what in my room is buzzing, but like a light or something lately has been um, buzzing. Here's what we're going to use for this nose. Let's cut it up here so we can get another nose out of it on another day. sure I want any of this now. What I'm thinking is dictionary paper because I've gone more white. Or music, white music paper. But I'm leaning towards the, the white dictionary. I 
got Whatever it is that's making that noise, it's driving me nuts. Every time I stream, there's this high pitch noise. All right, we'll put that in there. I think it's the lights in this that I have. Someday I'm going to clean this all up and make a pattern bag for this one. Because I keep losing one ear part. It's just sort of tucked up under my laptop. There are those. Those are the colors that I sent you extra, Eileen. I sent you a sun gold, the touch of mink, the Tiffany blue, and then I sent you one that's called a sunrise or sunset that's kind of a peachy color. So I threw in like four extra little half pans for you. And for those of you who didn't watch yesterday's stream, I'm having a cyber cell at my Etsy. And everything is 25% off, including the handmade watercolor sets. Um, it's $25 off a purchase of $20 or more. It ends on December the 9th. The coupon code is Cyber2018. And my Etsy shop is just Debbie Epps. And I, have, uh, I did a video that had a flip through. But these were the what I was looking for the night that I couldn't find. Thanks, Eileen. And the other one I sent you, Eileen, looks like... Well, this doesn't show it very good, but it's a pretty coral peach color. Okay, so that'll work for our bunny. We just need to fix that little. And then we'll use watercolor on it. Okay, so let's set that aside. Let's get... Just realized that all those sponges we used the other day are still in the water. Let me get those out. Before they get icky. Those are just all the makeup sponges I used the other day. And the, the poof thing. The pouncer. 
if you don't soak them and get that, they'll dry so hard, you, you got to cut it off. So I was just let them soak overnight in the water. Okay. Thanks, Eileen. There's the link to the shop in the chat. If you're interested in shopping for a gift for someone or yourself, I appreciate it. Any orders that I get between now and uh, Friday morning, I'll take to the post office Friday. Then and Eileen's is already mailed out and gone. They'll be there Friday and Saturday. No, Lori's will be there Friday. Um, Eileen's and Lynn's will be there on uh, Saturday. Oh, there it goes, Tay Tay. Let me call her. Bob's watching a movie. He's gonna flip the cheese. Tay Tay. Sorry, babe. She's going to end up in Shauna's door one day. Just saying. And I'm not putting the gel medium on top. So I still have the option to add color. I'm going to cut that little bit out there again in a minute. Those are the best kind. They're what you want, right, Eileen? I did get an order for a... Uh, hey, Tay Tay. I did get an order for a bunny. It's a princess bunny, but I'll have to go get, um, she needs a tiara. And no, it's not for Janet. So that'll go on there. So let's, so I'm gonna get one of those rhinestone Tiaras that you can get like from Jolie that are like the that stick. So we can do a crown for the princess. I haven't decided what else. Um, she hasn't, her niece hasn't told me what colors. I'm assuming it's going to be like pink and purple would be my guess. Knowing Brie. Well, yeah, well, eventually we'll do the eyes dot. But you can't do the eyes at the beginning. 
Because then when you put the watercolor on, you just pollute your white. But at some point, they will get done. I'm thinking I might uh, use uh, some ink tints and let it bleed and call it a day. Okay, so we're going to start with the blanket on this. Okay, the face is going to go in here, and the body has to tuck under the face. And the face goes right here. Okay, so let's hold those arms down. All right, let me glue that down. And I don't know what I want to use to finish these, so I'm going to leave it where I have options right now. If I do the pit pens, then I need gel medium on top of them. If I do the ink tints, then I don't want gel medium on top of it. All right, she's been in here and gone now, so she's probably can be happy. All right, so there's the first one. All pieced, ready for the details. Now on this one, I'm thinking, do we want Let me close that door. She's been in and out. I don't want that movie to bleed. All right, let's put the blanket on first.
Okay. Get that body where it goes. All right, let's hold the arms down. I think this one needs to come over some. So we're just gonna put a little bend in the arm so it'll All right, let's put, oh, I'll put the glue on the wrong side. Cuss words. I think it'll be okay, because I don't think there's that much glue. But let's hit it with a little bit of wet white. That should be okay. All right. Kitty number three. <sighs> I'm going to let this one angle a little different. It's going to be matted, so this outer part's not going to show. Okay, there we go. And I'm not worried about the glue on the background. That'll help. I'm not trying to add any more watercolor to the background. Okay, and the cat face, let's make sure we use the glue on the right side here. Okay, that one's done. Hi, CB. Hi, Rosemary. All right, 
this one, the body is in pieces because the paper, the print wasn't the way I wanted it. So I separated the arms and the body of the cat. Let me put the body on first. I'm just going to put the glue on that background. I'll put the glue on the back of this arm. This arm, we're almost there, people. might be a little longer on the one side, but it'll be all right. Put that face on. Okay. Now we're ready for Ink tense. Look away. Look away, Eileen. I think we'll start with ink tense. Let me get the box of the ink tense out. And then I think we'll flood some of the areas that we want to flood with watercolor with shimmer watercolor. All right, so I'm going to find ink black. There's an outliner, but I'm leaning towards the ink black. There's the outliner. I'm going to focus on the face first. There's sepia. That's a good one, too. Chinese ink. India ink, any of those will work to start with. Okay. So I'm going to just do the outline of that real, real quick. What's this mouth area? On the bunny. 
The bunny we want to color. We'll do the bunny more later. And I kind of do a comma for the nose. Taking some of that same color that I put down and putting it around the edges. Just to finish that nose. All right, so let's set the bunny because the bunny is going to be more exciting colors. All right. So let's get young Gibson's face. I'm going to use the bark for this one, maybe. And I'm just going to come around the edges of the ear. All right, and this face is cut. So I can get the placement of the eyes. And the nose. I'm just going to go around the outside of the edges. We're going with the ink to its wonders here. And just sort of add more ink where we want the shadows to be. We'll add white in where the eyes are. Let me move the camera in. Do I have... No, I don't have the blocks. I want the blocks, but I just have not broke down and bought them. Ange was going to send me her set of 12 to try. And then, you know, life happened. Let's move that in just a little. Okay.
And I'm going to let the pattern of the paper really be the cat. I'm just doing the edges. Okay, let's... Blend some of this out. So I just sort of flooded the paper with some water. I'm just going to go around the edges. I'm just trying to activate the ink that I laid down. and blend it. When it dries, it'll be permanent. I have a couple places that the ears trying to come up. But I'll get those with glue in a little bit when I Because obviously with the pattern, I'm not going for realism. I'm trying to add a little more tint in here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> we'll lighten it up with some white here in a minute, I think. We'll let that dry. Let's find a dark, let me find a dark color for the blanket. I have all my colors swatched in the lid. Uh, let's try red oxide. They are hard to grab because they're not, the tips of them are not the color that you think. That's willow.
Sorry. There's that black ink. None of those are red oxide. Red oxide. Ugh, never would have. See, like, to that does not look like red oxide. What could be a hat? I'm just going to put some folds in the blanket. And I'm going to put some gray in there with that red oxide next to it. Some shadow kind of underneath there. too bad no he doesn't have whiskers yet he doesn't have eyes yet this is how he likes to lay he lays on the back of a chair so, like I said, this will be in a mat. So, it will look like this, basically, when matted. But I'm going to assembly line. So, I'm going to do all the ink work, let them dry, then come back and do the whiskers and the eyes. Sorry, Dot. In fact, I need to put the white in for the eyes right now and let it dry. I'm using a Posca paint pen.
so I can get the eye in opaque. And I think I'm going to come in and put some white in where the nose is and come back there too. And let some white go in here. Okay, so we'll let that dry because that kind of adds to the face. I'm not going to do all of them necessarily just like Gibson's face, but I'm just trying to add some <clears throat> softness to his face. So let's set that one aside. All right. Let's find... blue gray color no let's make him an orange color like a brown orange let's get him baked earth yeah baked earth works I think. Unless we want to go. I'm not sure how the baked earth is going to look with the silver, though. There's silver on here. Could just go with the gray, like a neutral gray. Kilmet, what's Kilmet? All right, let's let's I'm gonna work on the blue for the blanket and then we'll decide. This is a navy. I think I'm going to put a little bit of a pink in there in places. Okay. Need to put more water in this. 
pin. Do that or just switch to a regular brush. I don't use water brushes that often, but I do like them with the ink tints. I hope you all cannot hear the movie that Bob is watching. Okay, so the blanket's done. <clears throat> Navy blue we can put away. Night dot. I'll tweet pictures. I'm not sure how far I'll get tonight. They may not even get eyes tonight. I think I'm going to go with the gray. Be a, a natural gray. I'm going to put a little heavier color in here so I have something to pull down. I'm going to pull down some ink down there. I'm going to need a sharper pencil. Oh, dots here. Joan left. Sorry. I'm glad you stayed, Dot. We'll, we'll try to get eyes in here at some point. I hate to leave him go to bed soulless. Let's 
This one looks like a fox, sort of. Right now. Okay, let's come up here. What I might do on this one. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. Just come in here and emphasize. This pattern a little bit. in here and we'll kind of increase that pattern it's intensity Now this is the one thing about ink tints that is good. If it leaves a line, <clears throat> that line stays like. If you draw with it, that line is staying. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, I think I want a brush with more water. For right here. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with hard edges.
put it on the kind of block that. All right, and let's take a little bit of that gray and emphasize that ear a little more. Y'all hear Bob's movie? Please say no. Night, Joycey. Have a great Thanksgiving. All right, so there's that one. Let's put the white for the eyes in. And I like that little bit right there. So if we want to add a little pink tip to the nose, we can. So let's let that one dry. Okay. Next. Let's do this one. I think it'll be relatively fast. Charcoal gray, sepia ink, that's a brown color. Outliner. All right, let's do ink black on this one. And we need to pick the pink for the blanket. Fuchsia, I think. I'll do fuchsia with the gray. Really just need that black where the white is. point on that pencil. Thank you. 
Okay. A little heavier ink right in here. All right, let's put the black on. Take the big brush. Trying to flood the whole area. Avoiding the hard, too hard of the edge. Hi, Shauna. Let's put the white in for the eyes and let that dry because I got that pretty wet. Right, I'm kind of blot. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm just trying to Okay, the blanket. Honey, can you turn that down like just a hair? Because I can hear every other F word. I can tell there's a gel medium on some of this. The blanket just about done. Okay. One more done. Okay, let's put that up. Use that. Don't need this. Put that up. Just trying to stick back some of the ones that we've used. 
kind of back where they go. All right, this is Chinese ink. This one kind of black paws. And I know this is repetitive because I'm assembly lining. Sometimes that's how I work. dark purple and mauve for the blanket. Under the cat with one of these. Okay, so that gets the two purpley colors. Let's uh, use the big brush. Trying to get more of the black in here. I'll give them black paws. This part won't show.
Use a little brush. The eye line. That line just a little more on the eye. the white in there. Soften that black down here. Just a little bit of white. Hi, Tam. I'm just going to flood it with some water and let it do its thing right now. I'm just going to sort of blot it out that took too much of that out. I should probably gel medium. Let me use some of that black too. No, that works better. All right, I think that finishes up the ink tints on them. 
Okay, now we put poor little Gibson's face back in our bag. Now I am going to come in and give them um, eyes color. Not the black, just a little eye color. This one's going to have green eyes. So that can dry. Okay, we'll let that dry. Not even go with a different green. <laughs> Trying to hit the pit pencil with the pencil, like that's going to pick up any pigment. All right, so that gives us some green. Let's go with blue eyes on this one. Okay, let's go with green eyes again on this one. And then we'll go with a more traditional kind of gold color on the last one. In fact, I may add some of that Sicilian yellow is what I think I'm going to use. Let's add a little pop of that in here. I'm actually going to go a brighter color. Add a little yellow over that. There was a little kind of a two orange there. Still not feeling it. Tan. Let's add the mustard. not going to matter once. All right. So they have a little bit more eye. They just need black in the eye and the highlights. Okay. Our bunny. Let's go with the teal. Let's go with the green aquamarine. Poor dot in the eyes. Okay, I'm just going to go around the edges of stuff and then bleed it out. And then where I want more color, I'm going to hit heavier with the pencil. Oh, 
Okay. And I need something to go with this teal in the center. <clears throat> I'm leaning towards a yellow or a green. Let's try this apple green. Okay, I want to put some apple green just right here above the bridge of the nose. And then I'm going to hit right here on the outside of the ear. Oh, that needs glue right there. And then I think I'm even going to add some yellow. Some yellow. Let me sharpen it so there's... Put yellow right here, mixed in with that green. And up this side of the ear. And let's put some green down here to go with that turquoise. Do we want, well, let's do that and then we'll decide. We may want yellow right down here. Okay, I'm gonna start with this turquoise in the ear. <coughs> Excuse me. that brush let that bleed down into that paper And I'm just cleaning my brush every once in a while just to make sure that right now I just have that aquamarine green pigment where I want it. I'm going to have plenty of water, but I can control it. in here. Okay, now we're ready for the nose in here. All right, so the only thing I need to do is 
I need to build up this part right here. And I'm going to add some of that green right in here and more of, I'm just using the side of the pencil. some on the brush. This side did better than this side. here. Okay, so the question is, do I want some yellow down in here. This is still dry, so where I'm putting the To hit the brush with some green. I want to add some of that green. Oh, I'm just going to go right here where it's dry. That was a pretty fast bunny. Okay. Now we can put the ink tints away. We need to put some white for his eye and let it dry. Get a little brush. Actually, you know what? Let's try something. There's not real good browns, but let's try dark chocolate. And then put like a 
like a golden color over it. That'll take less time than waiting for the paint to dry. Okay, eight tenths, we put those away. Need to glue that down. Now I don't care if the gel medium gets on top of the ink. I'll make it slide easier when I do the whiskers with the pins. It'll help him, her, stick. Sometimes when you glue on this heavy watercolor paper, it doesn't want to stick down. Okay, that's that. Three. There's an eight, but that one. Is. Okay, there's the little white. And let's put that black in. Let's put the black in all of them. That's got to dry still, I think. Let me get this with the heat gun real quick. Hi, Button. Yeah, I think the colors came out really pretty. And this is the distressed oxides that we played with and the Neo 2s. one's drying out. I think it's the one that's dead. Here's a black brush pit pen.
Okay, there's that. Um, we'll add the highlights in a minute. Look at that face real quick. Really can't see the nose on this one. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna get a little pink that I can use here and there. All right, let's go with whiskers. And I'm going to keep it kind of simple. And then I'm going to take some white. And a white whisker. That one needs to be glued down too. Little highlight to the eye. Okay, that one's done. I think this is my favorite one of the cats. All right, let's. Whisker. And I think on this one, I'm just gonna.
All right, let's put the white highlight in this. This time I'm not going to put the white whiskers. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to put a little bit of pink down in that nose. And all it is, button, I think, I'm not sure if you came in. It's a photograph I took of Gibson. And I cut the photograph apart to paper piece him. And then just added India ink to them. Okay. I'm just going to go with six whiskers on all of them because it seems to fit. White highlight in the eye. Let's put some pink down in that nose area. This one, I think I'm going to even put some. there wasn't gel medium and I put that marker straight to that paper. That'll dry pink. Lynn, did you hear me say the bunny should get here there Friday for you? This one on a birthmark on the nose just because we can and that's what this was supposed to be was a birthmark around the eye
put some ink up here and move that around. And kind of. All right, let's take some pink. And some pink here. That's just water brush on the pit pans. I don't think that'll ruin them. There's no glue. Oh, I do want some pink down here. All right, highlights in the on the eye. Okay. Uh, Eileen ordered uh, watercolors. Okay. So now we got bunny to do. Let me see if I have a different aid. I hope I do. Yeah. So. Nobody can ruin a like me. Let's try. Kind of a brush first. And then we'll come back with the finer tip. In a minute. One that works.
right, so the eyelashes are on. Whiskers. Oh, I like how that paint pen did the whiskers. And we'll take a smaller pen, like the three, and come back with some smaller whiskers. That's an eight. Try this three. Problem with the pins is they get uh, <clears throat> wax, you know, the gel medium built up on them. Okay. It's a darker one there. All right. So. Put all this back in here. Need highlights in the eye. Name them. On three. Too much white in this one area, so I'm just going to clean it up with the black. Okay. So. You know what we're going to do? We're going to name this one Lena. Because she brings sunshine to all of us. All right, so what? We'll that will be Miss Lena. Just will need to go in the mat later. Like I said, the background is uh, Neo 2s and Distress Oxides, which we did on another stream when we were playing with the Distressed Oxides. All right, let's give the... I don't know where. Let me get the mat. So these are going to be kind of like this. So I'm going to sign up here. on them.
And it handled the the collage pretty well. Like I didn't pick up or move, see a lot of it. It might have blended a little in here, but I don't really care. Okay, name, name, name. Okay, so they're going to kind of go like that. Do we want to give the cats names or not? Towards, I'm leaning towards not. I was confused during all of Joyce's stream. All the cats need names. Okay. I don't know where we want to write the names. Where, give them names. Okay, so where do we want to put the name? This is how it's matted. Do we want to write it along this side? Or down here in the bottom? So one is up here on the sides, two is down here at the bottom. I'm not sure they're going to show up on the blanket. So I'm leaning towards here. See, that's where I'm not sure. The other thing is, if you have a cat and it has a name on it and it's not your cat, maybe you don't buy it. So I think I'm going to leave them nameless. This one I'm really happy with. This one has sparkles on it. I'm tempted to put some more sparkles in some places. Like it needs to sparkle up in the other area. And I'm thinking about adding a little sparkle. This one has sparkle missing too. Thinking about sparkling these patches. where the dark spots are. On this one, I'm thinking it needs sparkles over here. Because it's got sparkles on its face that the paper already had. On the 
Charles. So that just added sparkles in those places. Um, there's no sparkles on here, but do we want any watercolor or something in there? Or just leave it stark white? I'm towards leaning towards this. Stark white. So the paper backgrounds were from um, Happy Mail from Carol, TMT Carol, where she was just playing with some watercolor that I used. And then they're my jelly prints. And if you came in late, what I did was I took a stark white. Okay. I took a photograph. Yeah, to me, this one's patches. And this one would be persimmon. But I'm not going to give them names. So I just took a photograph of my own personal cat that we had and I cut it apart to make my pattern. And you'll see I even cut up in a couple places on the face just to help. Then I used the ink tints after I glued everything and used a brush just to soften the edges. Our trick that Miss Lena taught us So the cats are paper pieced, then inked with ink tints, and then finished off with pen and ink work. I think they turned out really cute. It kind of goes with the bunnies that I carry. Yeah, it is when I bought, when she had her auction and I bought some pieces uh, for Dot and me. Then she sent some papers with it. So I don't think I'll give the cats names. Um, if I use the pattern again next time, I think I might focus on not gray. But. Like, I could have made this one more of a calico cat. Easily. Like, use neutral paper and then make, make a calico pattern. Or um, an, a marmalade or find some paper that looks striped. This one is my favorite. So, I will list these in the store. So that they'll be included on the sale. And if you didn't know, I'm having a pop-up Etsy sale. 25% off all art and handmade watercolors now through December the 9th. You just have to spend $20 minimum. Uh, the coupon code is CYBER2018. CYBER2018. And my Etsy shop is just Debbie Epps. The link is in the chat above. Eileen put it in there for us. If you order between now and Friday, I will be making a trip to the post office Friday. Those of you who have ordered, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. If you haven't ordered and you're looking for little gifts, I have plenty of things under the, if you look small, uh, under 30, there are a lot of things that are under 30. If you want to get a lot of little. So I will add these cats in there. Yeah, this one's the sparkle is going to be really pretty because you can see when it dries, it has kind of a green color to that sparkle. 
which pops against that that purple. But yeah, I like this. Uh, that's a deco art stencil. It's one of the ones that has four that goes with the alphabet. It reminds me kind of of a quilt. It's supposed to be like a herringbone. And I don't know where the pink and the cream kind of stuff came from on this one. Uh, it might have been when we were doing the distressed oxides. Or it might have been when I was watercoloring something. That ear was trying to come up. There's another ear that is trying to pop. So thanks for hanging out. Um, don't know what our plans are tomorrow, but I will probably stream sometime tomorrow. We'll see what uh, Bob wants to do when we eat and that kind of stuff. I know some of us are home without kids or family. So I thought somebody might want some. If, if I do stream, it might be in the evening. At when people are done eating and maybe family's gone home. And All right, y'all have a great evening. And I'll see you tomorrow. If not, have a great Thanksgiving.